Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Daz Reacts, and today I am reacting to the top 10 funniest things to happen at award shows, and I'm presuming the majority of these are going to be award shows in America because funny shit doesn't really happen over here. The, a big thank you to Miss Mojo for letting me react to this video. The, I will put a link to their page down below. Go and check them out. Go and subscribe to their channel. Subscribe to this channel. Let me know down below if there's anything you want me to react to. I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. It's the story of how George Clooney would rather float away into space and die than spend one more minute with a woman his own age. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest things to happen at award shows. No, no, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not. I'm not. No, I just started the speech. Why would you think I'm done? <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at hilarious skits, speeches, and unscripted moments from award shows that were fortunately immortalized on camera. What do you think is the funniest award show moment ever? Let us know in the comments. I'm looking forward to this. Honestly, I'm not going to lie that I don't watch award shows that American ones, British ones, any ones. I don't watch award shows because they're just too long and... I ain't got time for that. They're just too long. So I'm looking forward to this. So the first one that has already come up, James L. Jones gets slimed. This 1994, I would have been eight years old. Not okay, crazy. Kids Choice Awards. Sliming celebrities was already a kids' choice <laughs> tradition, but for the 1994 show, producer Albie Hecht set his sights on an especially high-profile star, James Earl Jones. Hecht envisioned an opening with a dressed-up Jones getting slimed at the Pantages Theater. Home of historic moments in entertainment, where year after year, Hollywood's biggest and brightest stars have gathered to honor their own. When Hecht initially reached out to Jones, the revered actor politely declined and hung up. Minutes later, I remember watching this episode with him in The Big Bang Theory, and like, I, I don't know what his personality is like in real life, but he done really well in this episode with Sheldon. Um, she, I, I, if I remember rightly, Sheldon wanted to start his own um, comic con and he went to James L. Jones to try and get it. And I believe at this scene, they was pranking, uh, what's her name? I can't remember her name, the one who played um, Leia in Star Wars, never watched it, but I can't remember her name and that's what they was doing. Hecht got a call back from Jones, saying that his granddaughters convinced him to do the sliming, calling it, quote, the biggest honor he could have. The result was this gem of an opening that initially creates the ambiance of a classy awards banquet. What magic? Will this evening hold? <laughs> Who will be honored tonight? I don't know. <laughs> After that, would, more and more. Why would you look up that, like, back in the day, sliming was a big, big thing? And it was the case that because they'd done it so much on the TV, the people wanted to try and do it everywhere else. And, like, it is the case that, like, you get slimed and people, like, it hits your head and you can still feel it coming, but people still have a tendency to look up. And I never understood that. I got slimed once and I've done exactly the same thing. That. People are stupid. I'm stupid because I've done the same thing. Celebs saw the honor in being slimed. They brought slime to a whole new level by taking celebrities that looked like this and making them look like this, which made it even cooler to look like this. <laughs> Number nine, Tom Cruise and Simon Pegg take Brad Bird hostage. 38th Annie Awards. Brad Bird rose to fame with animated classics like The Iron Giant, The Incredibles, and Ratatouille. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol marked his foray into live action. That same year, he received the Windsor McKay Award. Bird wasn't able to accept in person as he was, in his own words, tied up. In a pre-recorded speech, Bird announced his plans for a career shift. As much as I value my time spent dabbling in cartoons, I've moved on to bigger and, let's face it, better things. I am, of course, talking about live action. If I'm honest with myself, it's where I've always secretly wanted to be. Something was clearly off with the camera zoomed in and Bird appearing uneasy. The camera eventually pushed out to reveal Bird being held hostage by his own film stars, quite literally tied up. If some nerd with a paintbrush or a computer could replace the likes of award-winning international superstar Tom Cruise and the similarly award-winning British comedy genius Simon Pegg, uh, such notions are absurd. And The Mission Impossible stars weren't at all pleased to be caught on camera, threatening the operator. Simon Pegg there actually, look, if you look at him, he actually he looks a lot like Bill Burr. <laughs> but 
like the expressions from Simon Pegg in that part probably make the clip what it is that with Tom Cruise that I don't know there, there's something about Tom Cruise that I don't know, it's just strange. Impossible stars weren't at all pleased to be caught on camera, threatening the operator. Nope, nothing to see here. All that remains is for me to say to you, my friends and former peers, thank you and please help me. <laughs> Number eight, Will Ferrell drops award, Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. The Mark Twain Prize is one of the highest honors in comedy that only a select few have received. Will Ferrell became the 14th person to join this exclusive club in 2011. Well, for 13 consecutive years, I have been begged by the Kennedy Center to accept this award. <laughs> and for 13 consecutive years, I have emphatically said no. <laughs> and how did Ferrell commemorate this achievement? He dropped the bronze bust on stage, bringing the audience and music to an abrupt halt. The cheers were substituted with laughter as Ferrell attempted to piece the shattered statue back together. All the while, he maintained the demeanor of a kid who just broke their parents' vase, trying to cover it up. Adding to the awkwardness, Ferrell vowed to take great <laughs> care of the award. I will never let it out of my sight. <laughs> I will find a place of honor in my house for this magnificent bust. While the stunt was pre-planned, the execution demonstrates why Farrell deserved this prize. For years I had- Will Farrell, honestly, I've just done another video for him, which was the, um, when he was a special guest on the Justin Bieber roast. And honestly, Will Farrell, he deserves so much more credit than he gets. He He's a true comedy genius for a lot of the films. I know a lot of uh, films he does get stick, but he is a true comedy genius, and I could watch his movies all day long. I had many questions about this Mark Twain, the first being, who is he? <laughs> it then dawned on me that since I was a small boy, I have thoroughly enjoyed his delicious fried chicken. Number seven, Conan Invades Television, 58th Primetime Emmy Awards. For television's biggest night, host Conan O'Brien invaded several shows. Crash landing on a familiar island, O'Brien tries to solve the great mystery. Why wasn't Lost nominated for Outstanding Drama Series this year? Well, we weren't exactly invited. Really? But you won last year. Nothing makes sense anymore. There's I never watched Lost. That, that I know it's an old, old show now, it was years ago, but I never actually watched Lost when it came out. That I don't know, it, 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 it didn't hold no appeal to me for some reason. I'm not sure why, it just didn't. There's no time to dwell on snubs, as Conan heads down to the hatch. Inside, he doesn't find Desmond, but Dwight, Jim, and the rest of Dunder Mifflin. Damn it, Jim! No. I did not have Conan O'Brien fall through the ceiling. <laughs> from there, Conan gets stuck on the phone with Jack Bauer, receives an examination from House, and becomes trapped in the closet with Tom Cruise. Conan winds up on To Catch a Predator before finally making it to the Emmys. The show has done similar crossovers, including one where numerous celebrities crash the office. However, Conan's voyage remains the gold standard. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 58th and final Emmy Awards. <laughs> I'll explain later. <laughs> Number six, Rebel Wilson on a... See, the, I don't know. I'm watching, obviously, I'm going to watch to the end, and these are the top ten funniest things to happen at award shows, and like, apart from probably the, the Will Ferrell part, that they're funny-ish. They're not laugh-out-loud funny. They're, I like Rebel Wilson. I think she's naturally funny, so... I owe this one in high hopes. A catastrophe. 73rd British Academy Film Awards. When the day's hustle and bustle is done, then the Gumby Cat's work is but hardly begun. Released during awards season, Universal had hopes that cats might be their ticket to the Oscars. Instead, the musical bomb. <laughs> so, sorry, the only thing you need to do with this is just like. Watching her on stage and then going, I've never watched a film cat, so <laughs> watching her on the stage and then going straight over to this, that was kind of a lot of weird transition for me. That that looked very, very weird. Um, won six Razzies, including Worst Picture. Although Rebel Wilson would share in those Razzie wins, she had a great sense of humor about the film's failure at the BAFTAs. The red is from that one time I didn't win Miss Australia. <laughs> and the black is from a funeral I just went to 
for the feature film Cats. Wilson didn't <laughs> seem too displeased that the BAFTAs didn't nominate Cats, but she voiced concern over the lack of feline representation among those who were honored. Yeah, okay, even in this best director cat agory <laughs> No felines have been nominated. <laughs> With COVID on the rise, Wilson also found a resourceful use for the BAFTA statue. Did we mention this was one of the last in-person award shows for a while? Number five, any of Tina and Amy's monologues. Golden Globe Awards. Tina Fey has described herself and Amy Poehler as alphas. Perhaps that's why we haven't gotten a sitcom co-starring them, but the Globes have provided a sample of what could be. I just wanna say that I, I very much hope that I win. Thank you. You're my nemesis. Thank you. During their first year, the hosts implied that they'd be nicer than Ricky Gervais. That quickly went out the window as they proved they had shade to spare. I um, haven't really been following the controversy over Zero Dark Thirty, but when it comes to torture, I trust the lady who spent three years married to James Cameron. The following year, <laughs> Faye and Puller poked fun at George Clooney's reputation for dating younger women. They targeted Clooney again during their third year, arguing that Amal is more accomplished than her husband. Amal is a human rights lawyer who worked on the Enron case, was an advisor to Kofi Annan regarding Syria, and was selected for a three-person UN commission investigating rules of war violations in the Gaza Strip. So tonight, her husband is getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> Whether shocking the room with a Bill Cosby joke or calling out the HFPA's lack of diversity, you can never go wrong with these alphas. Number four, Steve Carell and Ricky Gervais Emmy. I do, again, like, I'll go to it because I feel that like sometimes when I react to things that I don't really have much to say that I have, I've, I watched a video today of like, it was called Scott Sterling's Penalty Shooter and it's one of the funniest things that I've seen in a long time and it hurt my face and then I've come onto this one and while it is funny-ish, it's not laugh out loud funny. So I'm hoping that like we're getting to the top three and I'm hoping this one works out. Steve Carell and Ricky Gervais, Office UK, Office US. Let's hope this one's a bit funnier. A feud. 59th Primetime Emmy Awards and 60th Primetime Emmy Awards. Steve Carell won a Golden Globe for his performance as Michael Scott, delivering an uproarious speech from the perspective of his wife. Who put her career on hold in support of mine and who sometimes wishes that I would let her know when I'm going to be home late so she can schedule her life, which is no less important than mine. Carell infamously <laughs> never won an Emmy for the role, but when Ricky Gervais snagged the award for his work in extras, Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert provided a loophole. Ricky Gervais couldn't be here tonight, so instead we're going to give this to our friend Steve Carell. As funny as it is watching the three hug it out of this victory for Carell, the joke didn't end there. The following year, Gervais did attend the Emmys, and he didn't shy away from Carell stealing his award. Don't look, I'm gone off road. Everyone's getting nervous now. There's nothing on the auto queue. I could do anything. This is live. <laughs> <laughs> I made you what you are, and I get nothing back. Gervais <laughs> roasted a stone faced Carell in the audience, making fun of Evan Almighty and forcing him to surrender the Emmy. David Brent beats Michael. Right. Good. <laughs> That's settled. Number three, Soda. Honestly, it is the case. I would like to actually see a movie with him two in. That I watched The Office UK, and his character, like Ricky Gervais's character in that, for me was a bit. Uh, and for what I've seen of The Office US, I do like Steve Carell. I think he plays it well. But from what I've seen of Ricky Gervais in other films, like and the stuff that he's done at world shows where he's like roasting people and things like that. Like, I think the two personalities could come together well and make a movie. That, that is something that I would like to see. This next one, the Twitch Chats Choice Awards. Never even knew it was a thing. I never knew there was a Choice Awards for Twitch Chat. That, that's new. Pop and Sabotage, Twitch Chats Choice Awards. There are more than a few flaws with online community voting. For example, a streamer can encourage their legion of followers to vote one way, rigging the awards. This appeared to happen throughout Twitch Chats Choice Awards, as personality Thomas, Soda Pop, and Morris took credit for influencing the vote during a live stream. You are influencing the votes. Oh, no, 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 absolutely. I am influencing the votes. I have power. 
and you're mad about it. The show climaxed with Soda Poppin presenting Game of the Year via video call. Rather than celebrate the nominees, Soda Poppin called it a trash year for games. These comments sparked an argument between Soda Poppin and the ceremony's hosts. What's your problem, man? I, I, I don't problem? have a problem. I, Why are you so do negative? You disagree with, I'm not negative. Why are you, you so negative? With me? Why, do you no, disagree with no, me? No, you know what? I do disagree with you. Yeah, Resident Evil Village is great. Cup also disagrees with you. Although they immobilized his telepresence robot, they couldn't stop Soda Poppin from Poppin. This is what happens when Among Us doesn't get nominated for the top prize. Whether you call it sabotaging or trolling, this was hilariously legendary. Mm -hmm. Thank you to our co-streamers. Thank you to our presenters slash robots. Except for Soda Poppin. Minus one. Except for Soda Poppin. Bruce Number two, Gollum <laughs> interrupts Andy Circuit. Okay, like I said, I didn't even know there was a Twitch chat gaming awards or whatever, but I don't know how that made number three in the top 10 funniest things to happen at award shows. The, the, the Tina Fey and I can't remember the name of the other woman. That one was funnier. The Ricky Gervais and the Steve Carell one was funnier. Will Ferrell breaking the Mark Twain awards was funnier, and that was probably, what, fifth on the list? Yeah, I'm not sure. The list may be in the wrong order. Yes. 12th MTV Movie Awards. Andy Serkis' <laughs> groundbreaking portrayal of Gollum was shoo in for Best Virtual Performance at the MTV Movie Awards. Since Serkis was busy filming Return of the King, he graciously thanked MTV and the fans in a pre recorded speech. However, his moment was interrupted when Gollum himself showed up. It's mine. I won it. It was me. We only won because of me. I remember Andrew, watching this live. MTV is my friend. My friend. You don't have any friends. Nobody likes you. He unleashed a profanity-laced tirade, taking aim at Circus, Peter Jackson, and even fellow digital movie star Dobby the House Elf. Nobody was safe from his ever-escalating rage. Nothing can compensate for the long hours of low pay and miserable experience we've had making this <laughs> movie. The speech proved so precious that it would later win a Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. An award show speech winning an award? Is that a first? You're all bastards! MTV <laughs> sucks! We hate you all! Good night. Before we unveil. Okay, so that one, like I said, I remember watching that one live many, many moons ago, and that one was funny. That, that for me, is probably the funniest one of the list so far, and it was true. It did win an award, and like, uh, a presentation from an award show winning another award that probably is a first. Bail our number one pick. Here are a few honorable mentions. Jim Carrey channels Jim Morrison, Eric Clapton, and Foghat. Eighth MTV Movie Awards. Another reason why he should have gotten an Oscar nomination for The Truman Show. I realize that dancing for the man just ain't where it's at. <laughs> and I decided right then and there that no matter what they tried to take away from me, I was going to be who I really am. Donald Trump and Karen Walker's Emmy Idol, 58th Primetime Emmy Awards. First Green Acres and then the 2016 presidential election. Farm living is the life for me. Land spreading out so far and wide. Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside. Streaker storms the stage. 46th Academy Awards. By stripping off and showing his shortcomings, Robert Opel gave us a laugh for the ages. Michael Jackson wins a non-existent award. 19th MTV Video Music Awards. What do you mean there's no Artist of the Millennium Award? If someone had told me that one day I would be getting, as a musician, um, the Artist of the Millennium Award, I wouldn't have believed it. Tom <laughs> Hanks' reactions. 77th Golden Globe Awards. Between Hanks's face and Ricky Gervais' comments, a plethora of memes were born. I came here in a limo tonight, and the license plate was made by Felicity Huffman. So, no. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> I reacted to a Ricky Gervais one last week, and it was some from this award show, and you do the. Tom Hanks goes through so many different facial expressions during his speech. It's her, it's her daughter I feel sorry for. Before we continue, <laughs> be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your... Williams turns a loss into a triumph. 
8th Critics' Choice Awards. Whenever Robin Williams accepted an award, we could expect a priceless stand-up routine. 27 years ago, you gave me an award for Mark. It was Best Newcomer. Thank you. And two years later, you gave the same award to Pia Zadora. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was very humbling. Thank you. As humorous as his Cecil B. DeMille Award speech is, Williams was arguably even funnier when he lost. I just want to thank you. It's so nice to have nothing leaving here. <laughs> I don't have to thank anybody. You, you pretty much said f you, Robin. At the 2003 <laughs> Critics' Choice Awards, Best Actor went to Daniel Day-Lewis and Jack Nicholson in a tie. The only other nominee was Williams for One Hour Photo, making it clear who came in last. Claiming to be baked, Nicholson asked Williams to come on stage. I want to thank uh, Jack Nicholson and Daniel Day-Lewis for giving me this piece of paper. <laughs> Has their names on it, not mine. <laughs> and I, I'm glad to be left out of this incredible group. We were treated to more than five minutes of classic Robin, complete with impressions, dancing, and brilliant improv. <laughs> Nicholson also butted in with some great lines, especially one about the genre confusion over About Schmidt. However, no one could deny that the moment belonged to Williams. And it's been a, a wonderful evening for me to, to walk away with nothing. <laughs> Coming here with no expectations, leaving here with no expectations. <laughs> it's pretty much been a Buddhist evening for me. <laughs> Thank you. Do you agree with our picks? Do you know what? Honestly, it's the case that... I don't know. I find that they got the order in wrong on this video. That the, the Will Ferrell one should have been higher on the list. And then the Tina Fey and... I really can't remember the woman's name. That should have been higher... The Robin Williams one, yeah, I agree. That should have been number one. And even down to like the um, like the um, the, the James Earl Jones one getting slimed. That was something that no one ever expected him, like someone of his stature, to get slimed. So that probably should have been higher on the list. I enjoyed the video. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the video. Some of them I don't understand. I don't understand why the Twitch gaming one was there. That maybe watching it at the time would have been a lot funnier, but I don't understand why that was there. But it was a nice list. Don't forget to check out Miss Mojo and their videos. Go subscribe to their channel. And please, if you like this, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and subscribe to this channel. I will be uploading daily. I take all recommendations for videos to watch. So I will see you in the next one.